you. Welcome back to another amazing Monday. Amazing Monday. Um, let me just refresh the group so that I can see any comments that you have here on this video. And it's working. The volume's working. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, uh, if you missed the group, I've posted uh, a couple things over the weekend that I wanted to discuss with you. Number one are um, a, a catalog that I subscribe to that my ideal customer subscribes to. Um, I subscribe to these catalogs and magazines that my customers subscribe to because I like to see what they're looking at. I like to see how their photos are taken. I like to see what color palettes they're using. Um, I like to see how they're upselling their products, right? So all of this is inside, all given to you already, as long as you know who your ideal customer is. We talk about that frequently. Literally everything I say and teach is going to talk about who is your customer base? What do they like? What do they need from you? How can you serve them? But if you don't know who your customer base is, you can't do all those things. You'll just be throwing spaghetti to a wall and seeing if it sticks. So that's why I thought it was super important to just show you, this is what I'm looking at. These are the color palettes. Look at this picture. What a great way. This would be a pretty color for a wreath. Um, these are the, the uh, colors that they're designing within their home. These are the throw pillows that they're putting on. All of these could be color palettes to use, right? So just so much information from just subscribing to these uh, magazines and catalogs that our own customers subscribe to. So let me get one of the things I also wanted to talk about. Um, we're going to be talking to you today about creative ways to make money in fourth quarter for your handmade business. But I just wanted to recap what I've posted over the weekend because I know it's been a couple of days. Um, the other thing I talked about was an insider an insider magazine article on Tracy Anderson, who is a uh, fitness guru for the high net worth earners. She, um, I don't know how many, I didn't do research on her. I just read an article. And so she's got at least two fitness program or fitness buildings. What do you call those? I don't go to them very often. Um, you know, where you go in and exercise gyms. How about that? <laughs> she's got two of those in the Hamptons. So, you know, the people who go to the Hamptons, right? They are the one percenters, right, of the, the of America. So anyway, she's charging a $900 a month for uh, fitness classes. Like that's her subscription, $900 per month. Now, if you want to come to take her class, but you don't want to join a subscription, you can come and pay $95 a month for a 45 minute class. But you only get two days notice in order to join the class. And then she also offers this service of $5,500 to reserve your mat for the summer. And she sells out every time. So people buy and rent space knowing they might not show up, but if they want to, it's going to be there for them. And the reason I thought it was important to bring this to your attention is because literally there are so many different people out there in the world. And a lot of times we focus on pricing our products based off of what we can afford. So people paying $5,500 to reserve a mat for the summer in the hopes of maybe taking a yoga class, right? That is basically the equivalent of us doing a YMCA fee or a Netflix subscription. Like we don't use it every month, but in the hopes that we might one day. Does that make sense? So I want you to really think about when you are pricing your items and just know that there is you, I think a lot of assumptions are made that everybody is hurting in this economy. And that is absolutely false. And we, one of the things I really wanted to talk about is to stop telling yourself lies. You are creating these false assumptions based off of what other people might be telling you, like the news media. Don't listen to that, okay? They are all fear-mongering. I don't care what side of the platform you're on, right or left. 
every one of them fear mongering because one side will say one thing, the other one will say the other thing, fear, fear, fear. So we've got to stop listening to what, in my opinion, my humble opinion, what is put out there or what the, what the news media is telling us to think. Start thinking for yourselves, okay? Number one, if you, if somebody tells you that sales are down on Etsy because of the economy, that is an assumption that they've made. There is no hard, fast rules or no st statistics that actually back that up because I have already talked to uh, somebody in my mastermind. Her sales are up over 60% this year. So who are you going to believe? Are you going to put it into your brain and think in your head that sales are low. So why even try or sales are low? Like I'm going to put this out there to sell out, oh, but even those sales are going to be low and it might not sell. That is not the way we come to the table for our handmade business. You have got to open up your brain and stop the limiting beliefs that you keep assuming or telling yourself, because I'm telling you, they're not always the truth. Um, one of the things I was going to talk about, I had a quote from Earl Nightingale. Have you guys ever listened to him? So he is like, is this is like old school stuff. I mean, I can't even remember the year, like 1800s, probably 1900s. It is like old stuff. Um, this is a quote that he said, success is not the result of making money. Making money is the result of success and success is in direct proportion to our service. So what does that mean? That means determine what you are willing to do. What do you want to do? What do you want to offer? How do you want to serve your customer? And then show up with all of that you have to offer. No holding back. Stop thinking the limiting beliefs that we said we, we tell each other um, or tell ourselves. So I'm, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit because sometimes when I get passionate, I just like feel like I talk too fast. And some of this is very important to hear. Some of this stuff is information that nobody has ever told you because I have lived the majority of my life not knowing some of this information about mindset and how mindset is so important when you are a business owner or you're trying to make a business for yourself. Um, number one, for, okay, we're in third quarter. I get that. But now is the time to be thinking about fourth quarter. Don't be waiting until fourth quarter to pull something out of the thin air and like, what am I going to do and how I'm going to plan this? We got to plan. Okay. So I want you to believe and have faith that you can accomplish and sell and make money and uh, be successful and all that. Right. But if you don't start taking action, it's not going to happen. All the opportunities come to us only once we start taking action with trying to fulfill our dreams. Um, so let's talk a little bit about mindset. And then we're going to go into what some I creative ideas you might not have ever thought of on how to increase sales for fourth quarter. First, um, the mindset. OK, so you've got to understand the way money works. And I didn't, once you understand this, it is amazing how much more it flows freely to you. Money is a tool, okay? There are no emotions tied to it. Think about that just for a second. The money that flows to you, the emotions that you attach to it are not, those are your emotions, right? So I think, I mean, a lot of us are probably brought up in a family where we just didn't talk about money. It was a secretive thing. Um, and when everybody was up in arms, the parents were all, you know, bantering back and forth. I could tell money was tight, right? Things were like bickering. Um, and I remember um, par my parents putting a lot of emotions on money, right? If you didn't have it, it was dire. And if you did have it, you know, it was great, right? But you have to understand that that's not how money is. Money is literally a tool and it will always flow in and out of our lives, literally always. And we can't assume and, and tie those emotions of lack. Or I remember thinking of, of when I was first a new mom, oh, I could buy so much formula with this money. And I was attaching all of the like, for example, when I told you that woman was spending, you know, she was charging $5,500, you know, the old me would be like, who in their right mind is going to pay $5,500 just to reserve a mat 
on the off chance that they might use it or not. And then I would sit and go, do you know how much I could use that $5,500 and how much many months of rent and how much diapers and formula I could use? That was the old me. You cannot think of it like that. You have to think of money as something that flows in and out. Does it help us when we have it? Absolutely. It, because we can be a better light of Christ if we have it, right? We, we tend to be lighter. We tend to have better energy and all of that. So I'm not saying that it's not important and it doesn't you know, affect us. It definitely does. But I want us to stop thinking that, that of way money is and way, how we tie emotions to it. All right. So one of the things you have to understand is that um, when we show up to our handmade business, we have got to show up with energy because energy does not lie. So if I were to come on here and send you this video and talk to you about this video and tell you how tired I am and how I feel like I got a headache and my back hurts and I got a lot to do this week and I'm trying to fit everything in. Who wants, you know, that to me just like brings the energy level down. Energy does not lie. And if you are selling at craft shows and you are projecting that energy, who is going to want to talk to you and even approach you? They're, people, customers are excited. They're there to spend money. They're on Etsy. They're ready to buy. They're in a craft show. They're ready to buy. They don't want to hear that energy from you. So if you can approach your handmade business with a high level of energy, it's only going to attract more of that energy to you. Does that make sense? So one of the things I want you to really think about is the psychographics of your customer. I know we talk a lot about the demographics, but the psychographics are almost more important than the, the demographics. Yes, we need to know where they live and what their age is and are they male or female and do they have a college degree and what does their house look like? Is it a two story? Is it a ranch? Is it a mobile home? And what is the lot that they live on? Is it far back? Is it an acre, five acres? You know, um, Is it an apartment that they live in? All of that is important, don't get me wrong, for determining your ideal customer. And so you know what types of products to make, right? But the other thing that is going to help you for the marketing aspect of it is the psychographics of your ideal customer. So in other words, why, why do they purchase Reese to even begin with? And a lot of you are probably thinking, well, they want to make their house pretty. I don't doubt that. But there is an emotion to that. Why do they want their house to be pretty? Always ask the why, right? Always ask the why. Why do you want to get in business? Write it down why. Write it down why. And it needs to be a lot more in depth than I just want to make extra money. I just want to put food on the table. I just want to pay the bills. I mean, yes, but how is how are you going to feel emotionally when all of those things are um, happening for you when you become successful with your handmade business, right? So I'm gonna, I wrote, I wrote down a few that I, my customers think, and then hopefully that might generate some conversation in your own mind or something to think about and maybe really have these conversations with the customers that are buying from you. Number one would be they want um, a comfort in sharing their sense of tradition. All right, so I'm thinking a Christmas wreath, right? Maybe they celebrate Christmas and it's very traditional, or maybe they're celebrating Christmas and it's all eclectic. So they're wanting to um, have comfort. See the emotion right there? They want to have comfort in sharing their sense of tradition. Number two, inclusiveness and in their desire to connect with their community or neighbors. How many um, have you, I'm just trying to think of, you know, when they drive, for example, I'll be driving through my neighborhood and my neighborhood, they go all out for Halloween. Anybody else have a neighborhood like that? And when I mean all out, I mean like all out. And I'm like, that's a, that's, that's a lot of Chris, I mean, a lot of Halloween going on right here. Um, so they, you know, and of course I'm going, girl, you better get some Halloween up, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm feeling a little left out. And so they want to feel included into the, the whole connection, right, with their community or maybe their neighbors. So inclusiveness, that's an emotion. Um, accomplished, accomplished is the third one. Uh, people who want to um, flaunt their money, 
right? Um, and I know, I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, people who want to flaunt their money, we how we feel about them. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't think like that. If people want to flaunt their money, there is nothing against you because they want to do it. So stop putting the judgments on people, right? If they want to flaunt their money, what is wrong with that, honestly? So if they want to flaunt their money, let them. Have you ever heard the term keeping up with the Joneses? That was something that was I heard a lot in the 80s. Um, but they people want a sense of I'm accomplished. Like I have... Um, you know, I've got this big wreath and I've got this big garland and my planters are set on each side and I've got a really nice pretty mat and I just look like I got it all going on. I have this sense of accomplishment, like I feel accomplished. So that's a, that is a, um, a feeling of our customer, or at least my ideal customer. So really start thinking about these emotions. Why is this important? I've got a, a four more I was going to go through with you. It's important because if I know that my customer wants to feel accomplished, I can use that word in marketing. I can use that word in the emails and posting on social media. If I know they're trying to feel included in their neighborhood, I could literally tell a whole story about how I know your neighbors are going all out for Halloween. And girl, you're just doing good to put a wreath on the door and I'm here to help you. Here are my Halloween wreaths. Do you see how you can use this to help better serve your own customer base? Um, the other one is unique. They want to feel unique. So we can do custom orders, right? So we could do uh, anything and everything that our customer wants from us. You know, I once had a customer reach out to me and they want a powder blue wreath with kitty cats. With kitty cats. I am not a cat person. Now, no offense about to any animal, but they just give me allergies and I just don't connect with them, you know? And so I'm like a kitty cat. I'm, look at me. I'm already scratching with the hives. Um, you know, a kitty cat wreath. Well, anyway, that's the way she was sharing or trying to display her unique personality. So when you get your custom orders, you got to keep in mind that that's a way for you to tap in to serve them as well. The other one is um, inviting. OK, so this is another emotion or another way to think about um, how you can present your creative uh, reads or whatever you're selling. I know here in Success Circle Group, we have people who are selling candles and chalk couture and signs and all the things, but um, they want an inviting, a festive, a positive, a joyful, and, and, and an uplifted mood, right? They want to set the mood for their door or their home. So maybe they want an arrangement for a baby shower to set the mood. They want to um, put a door, a wreath on their door to have it be inviting and set the mood for Thanksgiving, right? So setting the mood is another one. Uh, tapping into all of those emotional words will just be super helpful. Some of them are spiritual. Uh, they might want to dis display their faith and religion. Um, maybe they want to display their pride in another, uh, you know, uh, something else, which would might be like Pride Week or um, Breast Cancer Awareness or Autism Week. You know what I mean? Um, they want to also express their values. So knowing what your ideal customer really wants to do with your wreath is going to be super helpful to help you sell more wreaths. Um, they want a sense of organization, like, listen, 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 Linda, um, my front door looks like it's got it going on, but my inside of the house on the other side of that door, sometimes it is a hot mess express. You know what I mean? Like the kids, the dogs, the running around, trying to do all the things with football and dance and, um, all of that, right. That goes along with being a family and being a busy with busy kids. And so they want that sense of organization. A look, they want to look like they're focused. They want to look like they're prepared, even though it's not really what's going on behind the door. So they're just trying to mask their hot mess right behind the door. And so those are just an examples for you. If you are trying to understand the psychographics of your ideal customer base, something that we've not really tapped into um, here in the group. All right, so now, now let's get into some of the um, the creative ways in order to make money in fourth quarter with your handmade items. First of all, I want you to um, set down, set set yourself a set like write 
a definitive goal for what you want out of fourth quarter. I want you to literally write this down because people who are more successful with what they do have goals. So I'm always asking myself, what do I want? You know, what do I want this month? What do I want with this workshop? What do I want with this fourth quarter? What do I want with this Black Friday sale? Literally write it down because you will only get what you are putting out there. And so I want you to start thinking about really what do you want? So take the time to write it down in a joyful, cheerful manner. I don't want you to be afraid. Okay. So imagine if nothing else mattered. Like you had all the time in the world. You had all the money in the world. You had all of the tech savvy that you needed. You literally had everything, nothing holding you back. Write down what you're wanting in fourth quarter. Okay. Because when we start dreaming big, that is when big things start to come our way. So write it down in a happy, joyful manner. Not, I want to make um, X amount of money or I want to sell, you know, 10 reads or 15 reads or 100 reads. And then I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I might not have enough time. How am I going to get the money to make them? Don't think like that. Don't think like that. You're going to start writing it down and dreaming big. Because again, what we put out there is what we attract back. All right, then um, stop thinking of the reasons you can't be successful is what I just kind of talked about. Don't think like that. Um, start thinking in, instead of reasons how you can be, how you can accomplish that dream, that goal. How can you accomplish that goal? Instead of all of the reasons why you can't accomplish it, start focusing and thinking of the reasons why you can accomplish it. Accomplish it. Um, I want you to trace your attitudes back. Okay, so I, it goes back into the mindset a little bit, how we feel, I think of money and how we think that, um, you know, how our parents told us money doesn't grow on trees and you got to do all these things and work hard to get money and, you know, all of this stuff. Like, stop thinking like that um, and really start asking yourself and discovering where did you start getting that idea? that money was scarcity like where did you get that idea who first taught it to you because it's it's not that way all right we're only projecting what we're putting out there we're only receiving what we put out there so if you keep thinking that month money is a scarcity factor or something to be like very slow trickling into you or maybe it comes in and you know, you don't think it's going to come in easily. I mean, that's all something that you are putting out there and you don't want to be doing that. Um, change the image of yourself. OK, so what that looks like, if I want to be a successful business owner, I'm going to show up and show out like a successful business owner. When somebody asks me what I do, I'm going to lean in and I'm going to let them know what I do. OK, I'm not going to be like, well, I sell reads, you know on the side, sometimes on the craft shows, I'll do something like that. You know, I'm going to be like, I help women make their home warm and inviting through holiday decor. And I absolutely love what I do. Do you see the difference with that? So I want you to start perceiving and projecting yourself already being that successful business owner. Um, I can't tell you how fun that is to be that. Now, um, is it fake it till you make it? Maybe, but I'm putting out there in the world what I want and what I expect to receive back, right? So there is nothing, you're not hurting anybody when you are projecting out there to the world that you want to be a successful handmade business owner. Um, the uh, Let's see, act the part of a successful person, right? That's the other thing. So um, what do successful people do? They don't sit in front of the television and watch umpteen seasons of suits, right? They don't, you know, they're really, they, they get up, they meditate, they write, they uh, exercise, they, you know, do things in the morning before anything even starts, like, but literally before the sun comes up. So start thinking about that as a successful business person. I know you're probably thinking, well, I got to work a nine to five, Julie. Let's, let's be real here. Um, I get that and I understand that. But can you get up earlier? Can you work on the hours of your lunch? Can you come home and do something? Can you work the weekends? 
I'm just trying to get you to focus on being that successful person and how can you start living it and becoming it now? Um, so hopefully that will help. All right. Y'all ready? Are we ready? Um, let's talk about creative ways to increase sales in the fourth quarter. <clears throat> Yes, Melanie gets it. Visualize it. You are there. You are it. We all deserve money, says Mary. Absolutely. 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 There's nothing holding us back. Nothing. Not race, religion, um, where we're living, how we were brought up. None of that holds us back. We are all equal in that. All right. Now, below are some creative ways. Okay, I'm, I wrote below because I'm gonna put this in the portal so you guys don't have to write notes. You can go back and watch it inside the portal, inside the Success Circle um, portal. Number one, Etsy. Okay, obviously I'm gonna say Etsy because I love Etsy. I've been having a lot of success with Etsy. Um, when I first started, Etsy was really big for me and becoming, getting my name out there. I didn't have to have a website. They did the, the marketing. You know, it was just very helpful to me. However, Etsy is a long game, okay? And we're talking about fourth quarter. What is this, August, September? Literally a month and a half. And I feel like at this point, if you're on Etsy, go all in. And I want you to list every day something. Every day, start listing your stuff. And I had somebody ask me why they weren't making sales on Etsy. And I looked at their Etsy shop and there's four items for fall. That is not going to give you the views you need in order to convert the sales. You've got to show up and start putting items out there. You've got to have variety and quantity and order. I think of it as putting your hooks in the ocean to catch a fish, right? The more hooks you have in the ocean, the more attraction you're going to have for the fish, the fish or the customers, right? So you're going to want to put more items out there and do it on a regular and consistent basis. Now, if you're not on Etsy, I don't feel like this is the time to get on Etsy. And I know you're probably like, what is she saying? And let me tell you why. Because in order to be up and running for fourth quarter, I just don't think you're going to have enough time because it takes time to learn Etsy, to do the keyword researching, to learn how to take photos. Remember me telling you about the catalog I was looking at to review the photos that my ideal customers are looking at and how am I going to emulate all of that in my Etsy shop? That takes time. It takes time to learn all of this. Lighting, how to edit your photos, how to write a description, how to find the keywords. Um, and if you are really wanting to make fourth quarter happen for you and you're not on Etsy yet, I say you put all of that energy into something else that you can accomplish quicker. Maybe you're tech savvy, right? Not sorry. Maybe you're not tech savvy and that's a little overwhelming for you. Then don't do it right now. Wait until January and then get an Etsy. Does that make sense? I hope somebody here is going to be like, thank goodness she said that. I'm pretty sure that's going to help somebody here. Um, the one thing that you could do, um, number two, these are, I'm going through, um, y'all, I have like 23 items to share with you because I just love you so much. Um, live sales. Now there are these really nice apps, uh, that cost money, but you don't have to be so techy about it. You don't have to subscribe to the apps. You don't have to, um, purchase third party things. Literally, when I first started and lives became a thing on Facebook, brand new, people did live sales the old fashioned way. They would bring out a wreath and it would be wreath 101. Let me know if you're interested in wreath 101. Put your link below of your, your PayPal email. Now, I wouldn't do this on your public page. I would create a private Facebook group for just nothing but this so that, you know, all of everybody's emails weren't all out there. You wanted something private and exclusive, okay? And then here's Wreath 102. Let me know if you want Wreath 102. And you're talking about the product and how it looks and you're going to turn it around. And you're going to show all of the glitter and shine. And you're almost able to like really take that one item and spend a lot of time, not a lot, but you know, some more time versus than a photo. You know how much more you can get on a video versus a photo. Um, so you can do the live sales. It's not something that you're going to just like decide today. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to do a live sale. There's a lot that needs to go into this. It's planning. It's like you can't decide tomorrow to have a birthday party for somebody who's turning 60, right? You got to plan. And it's the same thing for your live events. You're going to have to plan for this and not just do it on the spur of the moment. So once you pl plan for this, you can have people go into a VIP group, 
Um, you can invite your ideal, your, your top customers, your repeat customers. Um, there's so many different ways of doing it, but I'm just trying to open your mind to a live sale and how that can be a creative way to increase sales in fourth quarter. You could do one, you could do one a month, you could do one every three weeks, completely up to you what you want to do and how much product you can make and how many customers you think you can get into your VIP group. So if I can get 100 people into my VIP group and let them know I'm going to have a special sale going on for the holidays, I don't I want to come up with more than five things to sell them. Right. Um, so you always have to look at how many people are in the group and how many items can I make to um, offer them. All right. The other one is email marketing. So email, I talk about this as being like the number two thing in my business that has helped me scale. Now, if you have not set up your email marketing, now is not the time to do it because that takes time. That's a long game as well, like Etsy. But if you do already have your email marketing up, now is the time to really lean into it. Letting your um, uh, past customers know that you've got new fall items for sale, that you are creating your holiday um, line and what custom orders can you make for them? You know, now is the time to really just talk to your past customers, letting them know that you're still there and you have something for them for this holiday season. And how can you help them? How can you help them right now? Again, if you don't have your email up, save that until January when times are a little bit slower or February or March. When whenever things dip a little bit, that's usually when I start to implement things I need to like spend a lot of time, time and brain power on. Um, now the other one, number that was number three, email marketing. Number four is holiday um, an uh, in-home show. Has anybody done that before? <clears throat> Has anybody done that before? An in-home show. So. For example, I had a friend, um, I'm calling her out name, Clara Nicole, somebody tag her because she, somebody told her I was, I included her in my video at Reef Makers Live. How funny is that? And now I'm talking about her again. She was brilliant when she started doing her in-home shows. What does that look like? That looks like sending out a message to your neighbors and your friends and your friends of friends and your church friends and their church friends and you know what I mean and just getting the word out that you're going to be having this in-home show and you host a drop-in so maybe it's one to five or whatever that time is for you you can serve beverages now they could be alcoholic non-alcoholic literally anything you want it to be you might want to give them a little bit of snacks to some beverages and you're just really going to help them decide on what to decorate their home with. And um, as they come in, you're literally going to have the items that you sell displayed in your home. Now, if if you want to partner with somebody who might sell jewelry, or maybe you want to partner with some pampered shelf person, you definitely can do that. So it's collaborating with somebody else and it doesn't feel like it's only you. It's also a great way for that person to bring in their customers and you bring into their your customers. And so you can kind of help each other out. But having something in your home, having people come through, seeing a wreath over the mantle, seeing the garland on the mantle, seeing the garland down the fire, down the staircase, seeing an, an arrangement on the buffet, seeing a table centerpiece, seeing wreaths literally on all the doors and seeing the arrangements on the table. See, you know what I'm saying? Like they're literally seeing your items used inside the home and they start to get these ideas. Well, maybe if that color is not right for them, you can offer to make it in a different color so you can take custom orders. Now, if you're going to do this, you have to be ready because it could be that a lot of people show up and it's a little hard to do it if it's just you. You're going to want to have somebody greet people at the door and you're going to want to have somebody walk around and maybe answer some questions. You're, that should be you walking around answering the questions and you're going to want somebody to take the money like when they're checking out. And um, so if you have like three people helping you, it really could be a great way um, let, for all of you who are like, I have an Etsy shop and I have it makes sales and I have all of these items in my home. And how can I, you know, what can I do? This is a good example of exactly what you could do is an in-home holiday 
Sunday show. Um, you could display even some items that maybe are not on season, but you could talk about how great of a gift they are. So for example, if I'm having a holiday show and I do an, a year round greenery wreath, I could say these make great gifts because they can literally hang it on their door all year round. You know what I mean? So that's another one. Number five is you want to get the word out. Okay. You need to get the word out to literally everyone. Um, tell your neighbors, tell your Facebook group friends, tell your, I mean, here in our area, we've got, we're on the lake, you know, we got a lake community on Facebook. We've got a little town of location of where we're at community. We've got, um, you know, all of the li different little communities that are in your area um, on Facebook. And if you're not in them, you really should, because a lot of people talk about other services that they have to offer. Now, you don't want to like go against any rules or anything. So be careful that it's okay to post what you sell in there, but start talking it to, about it to your friends, your church friends, your uh, neighbors, your physicians, literally everybody that you come in contact with, you can get the word out that you make holiday wreaths, you make bows, you make bows. Do you know how much money you could be making for just making bows? And if you guys are not in our holiday bow making masterclass that starts next week, um, I'm going to show you. There are some people that are selling bows for over $20 that costs a lot less to make them. So holiday bows are a great way because a lot of people struggle with that and they would much rather pay somebody and then learn. So if you are struggling and you want to learn in order to make extra money for fourth quarter, learning bows is another great way to increase that revenue. The other thing, we're going to get to upsells in, in a little bit, but that's another great add-on that you could do when somebody buys a wreath. You could say, hey, do you want a matching bow for your mailbox? You know what I mean? It's just a little added extra um, thing. The other one is use your own product. How many of you don't have a wreath on your front door? And I know you're out there because that's me. <laughs> I literally don't have a wreath on my front door. And I, every time I drive up, I'm thinking I need to get a wreath on my front door. Um, because majority of the times when we are, you know, business people, we tend to do our own homes last. And that's not how you need to go into the holiday season. You need to do your homes first. Like you should already have some Halloween stuff up or decorated for fall or anything like that. And, and October, I want you to be decked out for Christmas because when people are coming around trick-or-treating, you'll be like, hey, we do Christmas. You know what I mean? Or maybe you have an over-the-top Halloween wreath and go, yes, we do extra for Christmas too. You can come, you know, we'll take orders. Um, I can't tell you if, if how many times when we were dishing out the candy, people would look at my holiday decor and go, wow, you made it? I'm like, yeah, go to here if you want to buy it. And so if you are not putting your own wreaths on your door, you are missing an opportunity. Okay. So use your own products that you make. Um, the other one is, and I'm going to look at um, the, the comments in a minute, refer a friend campaign. Who has heard me talk about this? Like this is a really good idea um, and it works so well. So when a person or a friend buys a wreath from you, you write her name on a card, right? You already pre-print your refer a friend coupon and it looks like a little, uh, I don't know, a card, like a business card. Let's see if this one, you know, this size. And you're just going to put a line and, and when Sarah buys a wreath from you, you're going to write Sarah on the card and maybe give her three. And then when Sarah gives her card to Nancy and says, you really need to go to Southern Charm Reads and buy your wreaths. She does the best quality um, here, give her my card. And then the next time I go, I'll get money off. So you can offer Sarah the discount and when she refers Nancy, does that make sense? So it's a referral program. So you literally could be doing this for your handmade items. Um, the upsell downsell. Okay, what that is, is when have you ever been those impulsive purchases? Sometimes when you're at the checkout line and you're like, dang, I need gum or I want candy or I need a drink or whatever. That's kind of like that last minute impulse buy, right? Well, you can sort of think of this at craft shows. You can think of this at um, um, Etsy, literally anywhere you sell, you could think of this. Um, do you need a wreath hanger? Do you need a matching bow? Do you need a lantern topper? Do you need whatever that is? You can literally ask them, hey, you got this wreath. Do you want a matching garland? And they say, no. Okay, well, how about a matching bow to the mailbox? So the garland is a little bit more expensive, but the bow is not. 
So you're just giving them options. Do you want something bigger to go with it? Or do you want something smaller to go with it? Does that make sense? So like you're upselling or you're downselling. So you're just kind of giving them additional options. They've already made the commitment to buy from you. So while they're in that thought process and excited, ask them, do you want a matching, you know, whatever to go? Do you want maybe a teardrop swag to go on the lantern, uh, the lamp post? Or do you want matching mailbox bow? Or maybe you want a lantern topper to go um, for the hearth. You know what I mean? So there's so many different ways of just adding more onto their order. Um, you're not going to add it. You're going to ask them, right? Um, are y'all liking these ideas? All right. One of them is a holiday themed workshop. Um, so have, think about a make and take class. So many of you know how to make the bows, you know how to make the wreaths, you know all the things. Have a, have a class, host it at your church, um, have it inside your home, um, rent a little space out. Obviously, you're going to want to do the math so you still make some money on it. But there are so many ways of just using your creative talents and holding a workshop because there are a lot of people who want to learn, want to learn how to do things. I mean, look at me. I've built my entire business on this one thing, teaching people that want to learn. And so you can literally do this in your own community. Um, and it's such a fun way. Make it fun and festive. Have a theme. Maybe it's a snowman theme and you're just doing everything snowman and it's all decked, decked out for, you know, looking really nice and festive when people get there. You've heard people having wreath retreats, wreath making classes, events and things. And I just want you to know that they don't always have to be over the top huge. They could literally be small that you have at a community center or your church or even in your in your own, own home. Um, limited limited edition collections is number 10. Y'all, we're going all the way to 20 something. So stay with me. Limited edition. OK, this what this means is you're only offering this limited edition for this quarter or this month or this weekend. Now, you can't tell me you've not seen this happen. And maybe you didn't know this, what it, that's what it was, but it is a technique to help you get action, to help convince you to start today, to do it now, because it's not going to be around forever, forever. It's a way of creating a sense of urgency. So maybe you're creating Rees and that looks like you are focusing on, give me something. Okay. I'm going to say gnomes, even though I'm like not liking the gnomes right now. Um, let's say for example, gnomes. I know, not a good example because they're kind of on the trending now. But let's just say that you're only offering a limited edition gnome fall wreath, okay? And it's only good. We're only making them. I only have this one. I can sell 50 of them. I can sell 30, 20, whatever the number is for you. And it's only going to be good for this weekend or this week or this month right? Whatever the parameters are that you want for you. So you could just offer this limited edition and they know that it's going. Um, there is a lady on Instagram that I've followed for a while. She's a wreath maker and she literally just puts her items out. Everything that she ever does is a limited edition. So let's say for example, fall comes around and she might have five to six different fall styles, but she could sell 50 of each one of them. And she sells out every time. And the reason she sells out is because everybody knows when she sells out, there is no more to be had until next fall. And so it's just a great way of giving, getting urgency out there. Um, customization services, you can, you can personalize something, you can customize anything that, you know, custom orders, add a sign with their initials, you know, there's just so many different ways of, um, customizing when you customize, it needs to be paid a little extra money from them. So they need to pay you a little extra to get that customization service. So that's just an extra way, another creative way, right. To increase money or increase your, uh, profit in fourth quarter. Uh, collaboration with other artists. I collaborate a lot with people in my own industry. I collaborate with people outside of my industry. And so whenever we can collaborate with other, you know, bloggers, for example, I have a friend, she reached out to a blogger, that blogger hung her wreath on the door, wrote about the, how, how to decorate in style for fall, um, tagged her Etsy shop, and she made sales from her, that blogger's email list. Does that make sense? Do you collaborate with either other artists or you collaborate with bloggers that are going to be a good fit in your niche? You just got to make sure that who you're collaborating with and what your purpose is, 
right? What your purpose is for the collaboration. And that if your purpose is to make, get more of the ideal customers seen or more visible to ideal customers for your, pro your brand, you're just going to want to make sure that when you partner with that blogger, that that blogger has your ideal customer base. Does that make sense? All right. Many memberships for those of you who have membership groups. And I know we have some of those here in our, I mean, in our success circle group, um, you can offer memberships for just the holidays. And I know some of you are on the fence. Like, I'm not going to call out names um, because I think we're going live here. Somebody told me we're going live on the public channels by accident. And I'm not going to call out names, but you know who you are and you've been on TikTok and you have been really toying with the idea of a membership group. This is a great way to get your feet wet with a membership group. And you just say, we're only going to do it for fourth quarter. So I'm going to help you get styled for fall. We're going to help you decorate for Christmas. I'm going to help you uh, create your Etsy shop. I'm going to help you whatever, whatever, whatever. And you can maybe make an agenda and just say, come join us by this date. Make sure you have a closed cart because it won't be available after this date. And that way you can just serve the pants off of your, your customers, your members for three months or two months, however long you want to make it. Maybe you don't want to work over the um, holiday weekend because of your kids. You know what I mean? You literally can make it anything you want. So a mini membership is a perfect way for those of you who are trying to get uh, into membership groups and you just don't want to commit to something long-term. Um, oh, holiday swag is something else I mentioned. So you can um, give anything that is um, an extra thing. So for example, if you are chalk couture people, like you sellers that we have in the group, what you could do is say for an incentive, you know, you're going to get a chalk couture apron or, um, you know, anything like that. Like you, how many times people give out these pens? You know what I mean? Just little incentives, little swag is what I like to call it. Um, just giving that, it might not be a little, it might not be something that they buy. It might just be something for you to increase that value of what they've already purchased. Gift wrapping. So premium gift wrapping could be an upsell that you get a little extra money on the order. So that what would that look like for a wreath maker? If you were a wreath maker, that would look like you putting that wreath in a cellophane bag, tying a raffia bow on it, putting a little handwritten note on the top of that and securing it in the box and putting some really pretty tape and some really pretty fun stickers on it. I mean, so you could offer this service to your customers and they will pay a little bit more of a premium in order to get that um, done. So if you offer that for free, fine, but you could also upsell that as a, as a holiday extra. Um, Pop-up shops. Okay, now in our area, and I'm pretty sure all across the place, people are having a hard time filling um, these uh spaces because people have kind of stopped going back to work. And so they are like, well, our staff is now um, all working from home and they don't actually show up to the office. Right. So there's these little areas all over the place. And even in the strip malls, there's always open spaces, open areas that you can literally reach out to the landlord and ask, is it OK if I do a pop up shop? You'll get what would the rent be for one month? What would the rent be for one weekend? What would the rent be for one week? Whatever that is for you, start looking around for that. Because when you just do pop-up shops, um, that is a great way for that. Also, craft shows is another one that would, to me, be a, like a craft fair. Craft show is another great pop-up shop. Now, um, you've got to really do some research before you do the right craft show. You don't want to be going into a craft show that doesn't really specialize or treat or elevate the handmade maker, right? You might want to um, do some research before you just go into any craft show, but you literally could do a pop-up shop anywhere in your area and make sure that if you do a pop-up shop, it's in an area where there's a lot of foot traffic um, so that people are walking and seeing, and they might want to stop into your pop-up shop. You're going to obviously do some marketing. It's again, it's like the 60th birthday party. Um, what do you call it? analogy that I was giving you? You don't, you're not going to plan a 60th birthday party and have it be this weekend. You know, you're going to really lead into it and really do some advertising. Um, DIY kits. A lot of people here have extra supplies on hand and you literally could put together kits and sell them. 
because you're probably looking at all of your fall things and going, there is no way I can make all these fall items. Or maybe you're looking at your Christmas ribbon and going, what the heck was I thinking? So you literally could do these kits that you sell the supplies that you've already purchased, and that would help bring in a little extra money for you. Um, you could do either teach them how to make it and you charge for that, or you can do free. I know a lot of people do live Facebook lives or YouTube lives. You get the kit, you come over here and watch me and I'll show you how to make it. So, so many different ways of having that for you, but you can literally be doing that. Um, virtual workshops and tutorials. That's what we do all the time. Holiday bow making masterclass woo -woo, is next week. So we're going to be teaching everybody how to make bows. One ribbon bow, two ribbon bow, three ribbon bow, four ribbon bow, how to put ribbon in trees, how to make a bow topper for a tree, how to put, um, how to make a garland, not a garland, but a swag for with ribbon, how to make a wreath with ribbon, how to do a lantern topper with ribbon. So literally anything and everything about holiday decorating with ribbon, we are doing it next week in our holiday bow making masterclass. So that's an example of a virtual workshop. So yours doesn't have to be three days. Years could be one day and one hour on a Saturday. So if you make it anything that you want to make it. Okay. So that's another great way. Charitable initiatives. Okay. So you could partner with a charity or nonprofit organization and donate a portion of your sales to a cause during the holiday season. This not only encourages sales, but it also reflects positively to your brand. So what that looks like is you're going to want to make sure you donate a percentage of the profits. Okay. So I know a lot of people think that, okay, if the wreath is a hundred dollars, that they are going to per give 20% of that hundred dollars to the charity for you to be successful with this. It needs to be 20% of the profits. Does that make sense? So you're going to make sure that you word it. We're going to be given a percentage of the profits to charity. Um, is this, you know, some people will be like, well, now you're just using something, um, devastating that might have happened in order to make more sales. No, it doesn't have to be something that devastatingly happened. It could be something always ongoing. Like I always support an orphanage. Um, I, you know, we put food in the food bank here locally. So it could be an ongoing issue that's near and dear to your heart. Maybe you want to support the animal shelter in your area. So it doesn't always have to be something big negative that happened and devastating. You know what I mean? That happened that you're trying to help. Not to say there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying I know a lot of people have an issue with promoting something like that because they feel like they're taking advantage and that of the situation. And you don't have to think like that. You're literally helping the charity. It's a way of you helping and serving. It's a way for your customers to feel good about their purchase. Right. And it feel good about serving as well. So don't discount people based off of your assumptions. All right. Festive packaging and add-ons create um, holiday specific packaging, um, holiday themed add-ons. We talked about that. I think um, you can enhance the box. So for example, maybe you offer a wreath hanger for the wreath, you know, things like that. If you sell digitally, maybe you do a bonus ebook or a bonus checklist or a bonus a journal or something like that. So you could do digital as well as physical early bird discounts and flash sales. That's what like Black Friday is literally. So you could do Black Friday, cyber, cyber sales, uh, Cyber Monday, after Christmas sales, small business Saturday. So you're just creating this buzz of something of a sale that's lasting very short term. And that's why Black Friday does so well. Just don't wait until it's Black Friday and to do it. All right. Black Friday needs to be planned in August right now. Like, what are you doing for your Black Friday sale? Write it down, plan it out because you've got to be talking about it. You've got to be priming your followers, priming your email list, letting your customers know as soon as they order a wreath today, put a flyer in the box and go, don't forget to check back with us on Black Friday. We're going to be having a big sale. So now is the time to be planning for Black Friday, whatever that is. Um, so there's that an idea. Um, I was going to say, don't wait till Black Friday because that's when everybody and their mother is going to do it. That's when all of the big box stores are going to do it. So get ahead of the game before people start really thinking about Black Friday, get ahead of the game and do it before actual Black Friday. You could do gift guides and bundles where you can bundle products together. So I know we've done this with virtual um, tutorials. We'll bundle like a series of 
fall rees and you could buy three fall rees for the price of one or uh, gift guides like you could create on your blog. You could create gift guide ideas for the wreath lovers in people's lives and you can link literally link your fall wreath items and your holiday wreath items. Um, you've seen people curate gift guides on their blog where they mention the tools that they use. So my audience is wreath makers. And so if I put together a list of all my favorite tools, then I can get affiliate commission when people buy off of my affiliate link, right? So having little gift guides idea is a, a way to increase some revenue for fourth quarter. Um, bundling, you might want to sell. Um, I've sold this before, three piece items. You can get a wreath a lantern topper and a swag, or you can get a wreath and a nine foot garland and a, and a bow for the mailbox, right? So you're just bundling everything together with one quick checkout purchase. And it's going to be a little bit more expensive, right? But we are already manifesting all of the people that are really ready to buy, right? Those expensive items. Also e-gift cards are nothing to be, that's the last one, e-gift cards, um, coupon codes, for Etsy, if you're on Etsy, um, if you have a website that will take a coupon code, maybe it's a, a, per, a woman in your neighborhood who wants to buy a gift, but she doesn't know what that um, neighbor's going to want. So she'll ask you and you can just give her a um, handmade uh, gift certificate that says good for one wreath valued at $80 or $180, whatever that is for you. So you could do gift cards or e-gift cards. But um, remember just to show up and have fun, no matter what it is that you're doing. And I know that's hard for us to remember because we got so much going on in our life. And there's so many distractions with social media and just life in general. So when you show up, I want you to make sure you show up positively and energetically because remember, energy does not lie. And you got to be all in. I don't want you to show up hmm, halfway, right? You know, I want you to really show up all in and give it your all, right? Give it your all. So hopefully these ideas helped you guys. Did y'all like these ideas? I cannot believe I've been on here for one hour. Oh my gosh. Um, Lisa, you can rewatch the um, replay. Manifesting Carla, absolutely. Linda says great info, love it. <clears throat> Great idea. Thanks for lighting a fire under me, says Connie. Yes, let's go get it. Let's go get it. <clears throat> just show up and serve. You cannot go wrong. Let me just tell you, when you show up and serve your customers, there is something that lights a fire within you. It gives you purpose. It makes you happy, right? You don't want to buy from people who aren't happy. So if you can show up and serve your ideal customer base, they're, you're going to be happy. They're going to be happy. And I can't tell you how many times I showed up to serve and people don't buy. It doesn't matter. I'm still getting that good energy back to me and I'm giving that good energy back to somebody else. So it, sometimes it's not always about the money. All right. So just show up and serve is the absolutely best way. <clears throat> Right. QVC uh, example, we brought in 600 items and there's only 74 left. That's example of um, the urgency. Exactly. All right, you guys, I didn't, I'm missing any questions. I never have a wreath on my door, says Sandra. <laughs> We're going to change that though, aren't we? So Rose says she's a former small town, does this um, something every December and for a weekend, multiple crafters in a different homes. Oh, so it's like a tour of homes, but it's a tour of crafters. Oh, how genius is that? Absolutely love that. Isn't that amazing when m multiple people get together and brainstorm? Absolutely love that. I think that was it, you guys. All right. Um, if I missed your questions, remember to come back. Hashtag replay. Um, that reminds me that you didn't watch the live and I can answer your questions. Again, I accidentally went live on my pages and I'm good. I'm down for that. Um, as long as you guys are. Hopefully this helped you. I hope I hope I inspired you. If you are new to us and you're like, what is this girl all about? You could go to hand sell hand how to sell handmade.com 
for more information on, we do this weekly. I show up on Mondays, we do this. We have John that comes in here on Thursdays and he does more tech issues, more tech training. And so I really try to help you market and how to motivate you with your mind. And so we do this every Monday. Would love to have you, how to sell handmade.com. Get ready for fourth quarter with us. And um, we have, there's enough, there is enough for all of us. Don't think that there is too much competition because that is never a thing. And the only thing holding you back is you, is this right here between your ears, that six inches between your ears. That's the only thing holding you back. There is no limit to what we are capable of doing. And so work hard every day to try to uh, get rid of those limiting beliefs. I know I've been doing it and um, I love it. I feel so much lighter and it just works. I'm telling you it works. All right. Changing your mindset over business and success and money helps it to flow to you. All right. I'll see y'all on the next time. Bye.